Shalom everyone. Let's talk about the YouTube channel Global Witness. Now this man's name, I'm assuming this is his real name, so I'm going to refer to him as such, is Derek Bros, B-R-O-E-S. Um, he has the channel Global Witness. He also has several other channels that go by the name of Derek Bros. Uh, there's at least three of those that have maybe 100 subscribers or so and um, you know a few videos on each one. Uh, we're going to be discussing one of those videos that is on uh, one of those Derek Bros channels. Um, so on or about March 20th, uh, which is about 52 days ago, uh, being that it's May 11th, 2018 right now, um, a friend of mine sent me a video by this man on the channel Global Witness. I watched it. It was about it was about an eight or nine minute video. I don't even remember what the title of it was, but I do remember as I watched it, there was a point in that video that really got my attention. He said something that didn't seem right. I think that what he said was light was darkness and darkness was light, something to that effect. Um, but whatever it was, it didn't sound quite right. And so I, I was immediately led right after watching that video to uh, the video by On Point Preparedness about this particular channel, Global Witness. So I watched that not knowing that he had, uh, the, that Derek Bros, Global Witness, had done the video entitled Unmasked, The Most Important Truth, The Serpent. Okay, so I then watched that video and was like, wow, this is, uh, this is quite something here. Uh, but interestingly, I was really not seeing any other sort of, you know, opposition, if you could call it that, or, or so-called exposure videos about him. There was really not much that I saw at the time about that. Um, but anyway, uh, so let, let's talk about, uh, we're going to talk about that video here in just a second, but just a little background on this guy. Um, he's, he's a very, very intelligent, very well-spoken man. Um, evidently he's done some time in prison, uh, it's from what he described of his arrest and the circumstances, uh, sounds completely bogus, um, but that's coming from him. So I really don't know what I can believe from this. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure if he's on house arrest. Evidently he's out somewhere in the middle of Arizona, uh, by himself doing these videos and so forth. And, um, you know, we're going to, we're going to talk about that a little bit too, uh, so this is kind of uh, th this video right here is going to be an analysis, an analysis, and uh, an exposure on this man's false teachings because um, I've been following him. I've watched most of his videos on Global Witness uh, for the last 50 days now, and uh, I can tell you what there, there's a lot that could be discussed here, but that that's going to run too long. So we're just going to discuss a few things, and this this video might run I don't know 40 50 minutes. We'll see how long it is, uh, but there's some things that definitely need to be discussed. Uh, Deuteronomy 27.18 reads that uh, cursed is he who leads the blind astray, okay? And also in Ezekiel chapter 33, um, Yahuwah says to the prophet Ezekiel, if I set a watchman on the wall, okay, that watchman, his job is to warn the people if he sees the sword coming to the land. And if he fails to do so, and, and the sword comes, okay, and the people are struck by that sword, and they weren't warned, then their blood is on the watchman, okay? But if the watchman does give warning, and they do not take heed to that warning, then their blood is on them. So this is kind of essentially what this is about. For those who may be being led astray by this man's teachings, um, also, I'm, I'm here to give warning. I'm not here to make any sort of threats or anything like that. <clears throat> this is not to... Uh, to sow seeds of strife or division or anything like that. Um, th this is this is about um, calling out deception where I see it, and uh, because ultimately what this is about is you cannot listen to this man's teachings and claim to be a believer in the word at the same time. It simply does not jive. It does not connect because his teachings run completely contrary to what the word actually says. But he is very well spoken. He has, he speaks with a lot of confidence. He's a very confident man. He's got a lot of charm. He's got charisma. And I think that he would make a masterful lawyer. Okay. 
And he's obviously very intelligent because his background is very high level. I mean, he's he, he's uh, he used to run with Hollywood A-listers, and he he shows this in, at the very beginning of this video entitled "Unmasked: The Most Important Truth: The Serpent." And this video is presented as if he is exposing this new great truth. Okay, and we're going to talk about that here in just a second. But at the very beginning of that video, it shows footage of him, you know, hanging out with Tom Cruise and hanging out with Mel Gibson and Robin Williams and Cuba Gooding Jr. Now, <clears throat> I'm not saying anything about those particular actors, but Hollywood, it is well known that it is a hotbed of Satanism and pedophilia. So that entire scene should be renounced altogether if you are truly a man of the Most High and a messenger for good. So... I mean, that, that's, that's not hard to see. Uh, so let's see. At the beginning of this video, um, it, th there's, there's a message that, that's put on the screen, which I found just kind of unusual, and it's, it's worth reading here. It, it, it reads, um, the beginning message reads, An urgent word I needed to get to you. You know who you are because you called for me. Now, I don't know. I don't know. You know, that, that just sounds, that just seems kind of odd. Uh, it's just something to take note of. It's something that I took note of and thought that it's worth mentioning right here. Um, but basically what this man is doing in this particular video is he, he's, he's, he's calling evil good and, he, and good evil. Okay. Isaiah 520 reads, woe to you who call evil good and good evil and call darkness light and light darkness. Okay. Um, that's essentially what he's doing. Uh, he, he's saying that the serpent in the garden is the good guy who told the truth, and uh, this this other god lied, okay, and that this other god who put Adam and Eve there, uh, you know, as slaves is the bad guy, okay, and he's a tyrant, and this is, uh, as far as I understand it, this is classic Luciferian Masonic Jesuit doctrine, <clears throat> just calling good evil and evil good, okay? Um, at the 1154 mark in this video, he says this, and I quote, he says, the creator of us was the one in the tree being cast as the serpent, being cast as the serpent in order to deceive you yet again. The serpent in the tree didn't do anything wrong. He gave you consciousness. He helped you understand who you were because you're his children. Okay, he's saying this about the serpent in the Garden of Eden. All right, he claims that the serpent told the truth and wanted to give consciousness to the slaves who were Adam and Eve. Okay, so let's examine that because if that's true, then the word in the Bible is not true. So both cannot be true. Now, I would say to you, uh, I want to pose the question. How else are we as believers to identify a false teacher if it cannot be done other than their teachings simply do not line up with what the Word says? Now, there is a lot in the Bible that can be, you know, people can have different interpretations of this verse or that verse or, you know, you know passages which aren't particularly clear. There's some in Revelation. There's plenty in the prophets and so forth. Uh, but what I'm about to read here is abundantly clear. Okay, on this particular point. So let's go to Revelation chapter 1. Chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, reads this. Revelation of Yahushua Messiah, which Elohim gave him to show his servants what has to take place with speed. And he signified it by sending his messenger to his servant, Yohanan, who is John, <clears throat> who bore witness to the word of Elohim and the witness of Yahushua Messiah to all he saw. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and guard what is written in it, for the time is near. Okay, now hang on to that for a second. Um, I want to explain real quick that when I refer to Messiah, who most people refer to as Jesus, uh, I refer to him by what I believe his correct and true Hebrew name is, which is Yahushua. Okay, I'm going to include a, uh, a couple links in the description box of this video, one is called "What is His Son's Name?" Okay, and this is a 
fantastic teaching by uh, the YouTube channel Messenger of the Name, and that is about the name of Yahushua and why his name is Yahushua and why it is pronounced as such. Also, there's going to be another one entitled Restoring the Creator's Name, Hashem Revealed, which is a teaching about the Father's name, Yahuwah. Okay, so I'm going to read verse 3 once again. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and guard what is written in it, for the time is near. Okay, so Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was thrown out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who leads all the world astray. He was thrown to the earth, and his messengers were thrown out with him. Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 and 2. And I saw a messenger coming down from heaven, having the, pe having the key to the pit of the deep and a great chain in his hand. And he seized the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. Okay, Revelation chapter 1, verse 3, once again. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and guard what is written in it for the time is near. Now, I'm going to guard these words, and I'll tell you what. That old serpent is the devil and Satan. It's not the good guy. It's not the one who told the truth. Okay? You cannot trust this man's teachings and the word at the same time. You've got to pick one or the other. If you're going to follow this man, you might as well throw the word out altogether. Okay? Because that is an egregious and blatant deception. And I know, I know that this man is smart enough, and I know that he knows the word. And I know that he knows what this reads. Okay? Now, I have even... Uh, I have even commented on at least a couple of his videos and, and pointed these verses out, uh, to which he does not respond. And, you know, that's no big deal. I'm not necessarily expecting a response. Okay. But it's like, look, you know, you say this, and yet the word says this, which is true. Uh, you know, what is true? What can we trust here? Well, I'm going to trust the word, and you should too. Okay. Here are a couple of other witnesses uh, that, that directly contradict uh, this man's teachings in, um, in the video, Unmask the Most Important Truth, The Serpent. Now, I would say listen, listen uh, to this video. Watch this video for yourself uh, from the 6-minute and 40-minute mark through to the end. Okay, It's about 15 minutes long. Watch the whole thing, but uh, in particular, the last, uh, the last 7, 8 minutes or so is when he really gets into this um, and, and just you know, talks about this as if this is a great revelation and, you know, that, that he is, he is bringing out this fantastic truth that no one knows and so forth. And, you know, and, and just gives these reasons, uh, such as, you know, why would the God of, of love, peace and mercy, uh, you know, require blood sacrifice and so forth? Well, his ways are above your ways and my ways. Okay. So, you know, you, you can't just throw that out. That's nothing but an assumption. Okay. Um, but anyway, here, here are a couple other witnesses in the Word in the New Testament uh, that directly contradict what he's teaching and bringing forth in this particular video. This is 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman, having been deceived, fell into transgression. Okay, so he says, once again, beginning at the 1154 mark in this video, he says, the serpent in the tree didn't do anything wrong. He gave you consciousness. He helped you understand who you were because you're his children. He also claims that uh, the serpent told the truth. But here in 1 Timothy 2.14, it says the woman was deceived, so she was not told the truth. Okay, uh, And then yet again, in 2 Corinthians 11, uh, chapter 11, verse 3, it reads, But I am afraid, lest, as the serpent deceived Eve by his trickery, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Messiah. Okay, so that's four witnesses in the word right there. Two from Revelation, one in 1 Timothy, and one in 2 Corinthians that directly contradict, uh, you know, th th this is not a matter of interpretation. The word directly contradicts what this man is teaching in this video. So either trust him or trust the word. Okay. <clears throat> He made another video, a uh, recent one. Um, it's entitled, uh, The Season Has Changed, Buckle Up. Okay? And somebody commented in this video, and it reads, 
the age of the false god of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is coming to an end. Don't be found worshiping this false god when he is done away with. And Global Witness Eric Bros hearts this. Uh, puts a little heart next to that, like, yeah, sure, I love this comment, I totally agree, you know, which he does to 99% of the people who, people, assuming they're people, and not AI, are commenting on his videos, um, you know, but, so, what he's saying clearly is, yeah, he completely agrees with that, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is a false God, is, is what he's saying, and that's, that's essentially what he's teaching in this other aforementioned video. Okay, so, let's see. Um, I'm going to read from Mark chapter 12, 28 through 31. And there's, there are many other, uh, you know, verses like this throughout the Gospels. Mark, Mark 12, 28 through 31. And one of the scribes coming near, hearing them reasoning together, knowing that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first command of all? And Yahushua answered him, the first of all the commands is, hear, O Yisrael, Yahuwah our Elohim, Yahuwah is one. And you shall love Yahuwah your Elohim with all your heart, and with all your being, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first command. And the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other command greater than these. Okay, so this is Yahushua quoting from Deuteronomy chapter 6 and Leviticus chapter 19. Okay, from the law. Okay, basically, the, the Torah, uh, which, would, which was given from the Father, Yahuwah, who this man alleges is the false God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because that is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that Yahushua is referring to. He's saying, these are, the, these are the great commands right here, okay, what my father gave, okay, so that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. You know, I mean, a person has got to be completely ignorant of the word to believe what this man is saying. They've either got to be completely ignorant of it, uh, completely uh, just totally unfounded in the word altogether, or they've got to not believe it, you know, and, and they've got to believe this man, you know, and I've been following most of his videos for the last 50, 52 days now, and he will quote extensively from the Gospels. I mean, probably at least 95% of what he reads when he reads from the Bible is from the Gospels in some way, shape, or form, okay? But here we go with Messiah himself quoting from the Torah saying these are the great commandments, you know? It just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It's, it's an absolutely, um, it's absolutely asinine to put forth that the, that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the false God, is the enemy. doesn't make any sense whatsoever because Yahushua is backing that God up. Okay, and what about, uh, you know, Matthew 4.4, 4, where he says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of Yahuwah Elohim. Okay, so he's saying you should live by everything that comes out of the mouth of, what, the enemy? Well, no, of course not. The one true God the creator, Yahuwah. That's who he's, he's referring to there. And that's what the truth is. Okay. John chapter 5, verse 46. For if you believed Moshe, you would have believed me, since he wrote about me. Okay. This is Yahushua saying Moses was writing about me. Sure, of course he was. So again, this doesn't make any sense what this man is teaching. Okay. In the video, Global Witness live stream, question you were afraid to ask. Now, that, that's not an error on my part. Um, it, it, the title of the video is Question You Were Afraid to Ask, not Questions. Okay. At the mid-32 minute mark in this video, he begins to talk about Cain and Abel. Okay. At exactly the 33 minute and 43 second mark, he claims that Cain killed Abel because Abel was demonic. Abel was offering a, a blood sacrifice, therefore Abel was demonic, and Cain, you know, we've been taught that Cain was the bad guy, but really Cain is the good guy is what he's saying, and he slew Abel because Abel was demonic. He specifically says this, why I give the exact 33, 43 second mark, you go there yourself and listen to this, okay? 
Again, the title of that video is Global Witness Livestream, Question You Were Afraid to Ask. 33 minute and 43 second mark, he says, Cain slew Abel because Abel was demonic. What does Messiah say about that? What does Messiah say, what does Yahushua himself say in the Gospels about Abel? Matthew chapter 23, verse 35. So that on you should come all the righteous blood shed on the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the dwelling place and the slaughter place. Go to Bible Hub, look up every Bible version. Okay, he says Abel was righteous. And, and why is that there? Well, I'll tell you why I think that's there. That's there specifically because the author of the Bible, oh, and by the way, Derek Bros says, yes, he's read the Satanic Bible by Anton LaVey, but he's also read the Satanic Bible, which is the Bible, you know, as if this is some great truth that nobody knows either because the programming and the deception runs so deep, but he is here to clarify everything, okay? Really, he is just sowing a whole lot of confusion, a whole lot of doubt in the word, and simply teaching falsehood is all he's doing. He's not bringing forth any truth whatsoever. He speaks some truth, but he is not bringing forth truth. He is bringing forth deception mixed in with truth. Okay, <clears throat> here's another witness to that going uh, going directly against what he says. And he says it very boldly. It's not a it's not a matter of if, you know, it's not a matter of debate. He says Abel was demonic. Okay? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. By belief, Abel offered to Elohim a greater slaughter offering than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Elohim witnessing of his gifts. And through it, having died, he still speaks. Now, who do you believe and what do you believe? What Messiah said and what is written in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4? Do you believe this man, who I believe has all the makings of being a cult leader? This is what cult leaders are made of. They're, very, they're masterful orators. And I'd put money on it. This man is a much better speaker than Jim Jones ever was. I know he's a better speaker than Obama. Okay, I don't know about John Kennedy, but he's pretty darn good. He, he has influence. He's very charismatic. He's very confident in the way he speaks, but he speaks lies. Okay. Jude chapter 1, verse 11. Woe to them, because they have gone in the way of Cain and gave themselves to the delusion of Bilam for a reward and perished in the rebellion of Korah. Okay. It's simple. That's simply saying, it's very clear, the way of Cain is the way of error. All right. Three witnesses right there, abundantly clear, directly contradict what this man is teaching. Okay? So they can't both be true. Matthew chapter 16, verses 11 to 12. How is it that you do not understand that I, not, that I did not speak to you concerning bread? But to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Then they understood that he did not say to beware of the leaven of bread but of the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Okay, so what he's, what he's saying here is that, is that uh, when he refers to leaven, it's referring to the teaching of false doctrine, okay? False teachings. I'm not saying Derek Rose is a Pharisee or a Sadducee, but he is, uh, he is one who brings forth leaven. He's, he's teaching falsehood, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6. Your boasting is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the entire lump? Okay? Galatians chapter 5, verse 9. A little leaven leavens all the lump. Now, the point that I'm making with that is this. If I can point these things out on these two matters right here, okay, that is not a little leaven, okay? The issue of Cain and Abel and, and uh, the, the issue of who the serpent is and who the good guy is and, and that uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is a false God, okay, that's not a little leaven. That's a whole heap and help and eleven. Okay, it's a whole lot of falsehood. So basically, you know, I, I compare this like this. This man might make some videos where, you know, he's talking about stuff where you do not necessarily detect any uh, egregious and blatant lies. A, a lot of what he does anyway is he doesn't, uh, he speaks very well, he speaks confidently, but he isn't really saying a whole lot. In my opinion, a lot of what he says, he's just talking out of his rear end. He's just kind of going around and around and, 
you know, he, he's he's talking as if he's talking to people who are not very well founded in the word and are going to hear what he says and think that he has superior intellect and superior knowledge and that that is where the influence comes from. Uh, but to get back to the point that I was trying to make there is that, uh, you know, if I'm an investigator and, and you're on a stakeout and you're, you're, you're watching somebody, okay, if you watch them for, say, six months and you catch them in two or three blatant crimes that, that you can put them away for and, and clearly easily convict them, you got all the evidence for it, you don't really need anything else, okay? Um, and and that's, that's why I brought out these two things here. It's like a little leaven leavens the entire lump, sure. So it's like, if he's teaching these things, how can you trust him on anything else that he's doing? You know, those, those two examples right there that I brought forth, I mean, that, that just shows that he's a false teacher. Why would you listen to anything else that he says unless you're analyzing him? Okay, because if you can't trust him with this, if he's going to distort and pervert the word in these ways, what else is he going to be doing? He's not mistaken on these matters. I know that he knows the word very well. Okay, I know that this is not a mistake. This is just, de this is deliberate deception. Now the question as to why, I don't know why. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, but let's move on to the uh, one other point. Uh, this, is, and this is a very important one too. Um, Let's see. Okay. So on, on his channel, on the Derek Bros, on one of his Derek Bros channels, um, he has a video entitled, Who is Azazel and More Bible Manipulations Revealed? Okay. Now, I want, I want to comment, first of all, that the music that he plays in this video sounds very ancient, and I'm very curious as to why he uses this particular music in this video. And on that note, real quick, he uses, he plays music in all of his videos, or practically all of them, that I can remember. And all the, all the music on the Global Witness channel, it's, it's like it's music that's meant to disarm people. It's, it's like, to me, it sounds like music to, to fall in love to, and to just totally relax and think, wow, what a great person in this man we have to teach us all this great truth. You know, it, it's like the music, there's no doubt in my mind that this music is used as psychological manipulation of some sort, um, but the music in this particular video, Who is Azazel, and more Bible manipulations revealed, completely different. Sounds ancient, sounds, um, I would say it sounds demonic. Now, I don't know, um, but it's there for a reason. I'm not sure why, but I can say it's psychological manipulation of some sort. So he commented on this video, and one of his con his his comment on this particular video, you can scroll down and find it. You, just, you might have to dig a little bit. There are a lot of comments in his videos, um, but he wrote. Uh, I'm assuming it's him. He wrote, "The Father has no name. Any name man gives him diminishes him. Any name is a name of another calling himself God." Okay. So he's saying that the Father has no name. Okay, so I, I took note of that, and then coincidentally, he made a recent video called, entitled, uh, Beware of Those That Are Twice Dead. And at the 9 minute and 30 second mark, he begins to talk about this very thing, and he does reiterate that point. He says that the Father has no name, you know, which is a complete lie, so we're going to examine some verses on that. Uh, number one, I mean, I'd, I'd like to just, you know, comment here, it's, you know, because he refers to the Father all the time. Now, Yahushua also refers to the Father, but he's talking to the Pharisees and Sadducees at one point in the Gospels. He says, you are of your father, the devil. So when referring to the Father, one could be referring to the devil, okay? Uh, so, you know, the Father has a name, okay? And his name is Yahuwah, all right? Uh, but now, now we're gonna we're gonna examine some some of this. Uh, even if you don't agree with me that the pronunciation of the Father's name is Yahuwah, to say that He has no name is completely ridiculous. And I, we're gonna uh, go over uh, a verse right here that that disproves that in one verse. In fact, half the verse just cancels that out. Isaiah chapter forty-two, verse eight. Now. I'd like to point out real quick that uh, you know throughout English Bibles where we see the titles 
of Lord and God, okay, those Lord and God has been used to cover up the Father's name. That is how important his father, the Father's name is. This is something. This is something that the that the enemy has done. And uh, I'm going to go over a little bit why I go over some verses about the importance of calling on his name. Okay, so where where you see Lord or God in the Old Testament, it is covering up what's known as the Tetragrammaton. Okay, so in the Hebrew letters, you'll see the, the Hebrew letters of Yod, He, Wa, He, and that is the Father's name. Okay, so Isaiah chapter 42, verse 8, if you look at this, in whatever Bible you use, King James or whatever, it will read, I am the Lord, that is my name. Okay, so what it should read is, I am, and then you'll see the Hebrew lettering of yod heh wah which in my, uh, you know, I am staunch on the name of Yahuwah, it is pronounced Yahuwah. Uh, so it will read, I am Yahuwah, that is my name, and my esteem I do not give to another, nor my praise to idols. Okay, so there you go right there. He says, I am, okay, and you see the tetragrammaton, that is my name. Okay, so right there, yeah, he has a name. And that's settled with that one verse right there. So again, Isaiah 42, 8, I am Yahuwah, that is my name, and my esteem I do not give to another, nor my praise to idols. Now, again, I'd like to bring up um, it in the description box below the link to the excellent teaching on the Father's name entitled Restoring the Creator's Name Hashem Revealed by the channel Messenger of the Name. It's well worth the hour and ten minutes to explain why the name is Yahuwah and why it is not Yahweh or Yehovah or Jehovah. Okay? So, I just encourage you. But even if you do believe that that is the pronunciation, something other than Yahuwah, again, it's like, of course he has a name. Everybody has a name. Even people's pets have names. Everybody's spouse has a name. Yes, he has a name. The son has a name. Yahushua. Most people call him Jesus, but clearly he has a name. The enemy. Okay, the serpent of old. The devil and Satan. He has a name. That's his name. Okay, the father has a name too. Don't, don't be misled by this asinine assertion. Okay, Psalm 105.1. Give thanks to Yahuwah. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Okay, so he's telling you right there. Call upon my name. Call on me. Okay? Don't call me by some vagary, because if you call on Father, now he knows your heart. If you really don't know if you're ignorant, but you're searching, well, he's going to lead you to truth. Okay? But, you know, the importance of calling on his name is very great. Okay? Because if you're not calling on his name, then you're calling on another mighty one. All right? Joel chapter 2, verse 32. And it shall be, that everyone who calls upon the name of Yahuwah shall be delivered. For on Mount Sion and in Yerushalayim there shall be an escape, as Yahuwah has said, and among the survivors whom Yahuwah calls. Now, Joel 2.32 is reiterated in Acts and Romans. Acts chapter 2, verse 21. And it shall be that everyone who calls upon the name of Yahuwah shall be saved. Okay? Romans chapter 10, verse 13. For everyone who calls upon the name of Yahuwah shall be saved. I want to call upon that name, okay? I don't want to be misled by this teaching that the Father has no name. Let's just refer to him as Father. Because guess what? When you do that, when, you, when you're calling on God and so forth, I mean, he knows your heart once again. He knows that he knows if you're truly searching for him. But you want to call on his name. There's great power in his name. And we're going to get to that here in just a moment. In fact, right now, Psalm chapter 44, verse 5. Through you, we push our enemies. Through your name, we tread down those who rise up against us. I'm going to give you a good example of that right here. Uh, okay. A sepher. You can get a sepher? Sorry, get that. All right. Sepher contains... 22 extra biblical books. Okay, it's got all the 66 of standard canon, but it's got books like uh, Enoch and Jasher. 
Okay, and Sirach, which is uh, just just great wisdom, a great book of wisdom. It's got some great uh, prophetic books in there, like Second Ezra or Four Ezra, and uh, the writings of Baruch, which was uh, the scribe of Jeremiah. And uh, you'll you'll see uh, Baruch's name come up in Jeremiah chapter thirty six. Okay, it's great stuff in the Sefer. Uh, but I, but uh, I bring that up because I want to bring out a few verses here from the book of Jasher. Now Jasher is a very long book, and it's got a lot of uh, a lot of extra accounts that were not included in uh, Genesis through Joshua. Okay, and it's uh, the book is three times longer than the book of Genesis. Um, so when Abraham is called by Yahuwah to take Isaac, his son, up for sacrifice, and Abraham, you know, he, he is obedient, and Isaac is obedient too. Isaac knows what's going on. Okay. And it's like, uh, that's, that's, that's great courage. You know, it's more courage than what I have for sure. So, you know, it, it's, it's a test of obedience and courage. It's not this false God that would say, go kill your son. Because you know what? Everyone knows he didn't kill him and, and Yahuwah stepped in and stopped him. Okay. He didn't do it. Uh, but anyway, so the account in Jasher is that while Abraham is taking Isaac up for this sacrifice, um, Satan is tempting him all along the way, trying to get in his way and trying to basically say, hey, you know, what are you doing? You know, what kind of God would ask you to kill your son and so forth? I mean, that, that's ridiculous, you know. And uh, he transforms himself into this uh, body of water to try to, you know, block his way. And then Abraham realizes this body, he knows the area. He knows that this body of water was not there. And then he knows what's going on. He knows that uh, these are Satan's games. Okay. Now, on that note real quick, I want to point out, okay, so this comment about, you know, this false god of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, so this alleged false god of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is leading Abraham to go do this, and yet Satan is tempting him, trying to get him not to do it, to go against this other god. Okay, that doesn't make any sense right there. Okay, Satan is going against the true god and going against what his uh, commandments are. Okay, so how could this? How could the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob be a false god, and Satan, who is also a false god, be tempting him not to obey this other false god? It doesn't make any sense. Okay, so I'm going to read, uh, you know, Jasher chapter 23. It's it's in the Sefer. It's uh, chapter 23, verses 37 through 39. And Abraham said to his son Yitzhak, who is Isaac. I know this place in which there was no brook nor water. Now, therefore, it is this Satan who does all this to us, to draw us aside this day from the commands of Elohim. And Abraham rebuked him and said unto him, Yahuwah rebuke you. O Satan, be gone from us, for we go by the commands of Elohim. And Satan was terrified at the voice of Abraham, and he went away from them. And the place again became dry land as it was at the first. Okay? Now, what did I just read in Psalm 44, 5? Through your name, we tread down those who rise up against us. How did Abraham deal with Satan? He said, Yahuwah rebuke you, O Satan. And what was Satan's response? Satan, Satan was terrified at the voice of Abraham. That's how you deal with Satan right there. Through your name, through his name, through the name of Yahuwah, we tread down those who rise up against us. Now, a deceiver, a false teacher, would have you believe that he has no name. But there is great power in his name, as evidenced by this right here. So I encourage you to read the book of Jasher and read that. There's another account of this in the book of Jude. This is exactly how Michael also deals with Satan. And it says specifically, instead of, instead of engaging in a railing accusation against Satan, he simply says, Yahuwah rebuke you. Okay, and that's how he dealt with him. All right? So... <clears throat> you know, again, the age of the false god of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is coming to an end. Don't be found worshiping this false god when he has done away with. My friend, you are the one that's wrong. I, I strongly encourage you uh, to repent from these comments and to look deeper into the word, okay, and to seek the one true God, and that is the god of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right? You cannot listen to this man, Global Witness, his teachings, and believe in the word. Okay, they simply do, the, there is simply a major disconnect. Okay, give one more, uh, one more example here. Uh, this is, uh, in, let's see, this is in the book of 1 Samuel, this is chapter 17, verses 44 and 45. This is uh, David and Goliath. Okay, so this is uh, 
right before the showdown between David and Goliath. This is what is written in 1 Samuel 17, 44, and 45. And the Philistine, who is Goliath, okay, and the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I give your flesh to the birds of the heavens and the beasts of the field. But David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of Yahuwah of hosts, Elohim of the armies of Israel, whom you have reproached. Okay? Through your name we tread down those who rise up against us, Psalm 44, 5. Also Psalm 44, 6, the verse right after that. For I do not trust in my bow, and my sword does not save me. Correct. Because what did he say to Goliath? I come to you in the name of Yahuwah of hosts. You come to me with all this weaponry, we know what happened, right? Yeah, it was a sling, it was a rock, but it was the name, okay? His father, Yahuwah, was backing him on this matter. And that's why he won that battle, okay? Yahuwah won the battle. The battle was his, okay? All right. So, just real quick, global witness Derek Rose, he has said that the uh, that, that it is thought that the Ark of the Covenant is in Ethiopia. So, I haven't looked into that too much, um, but I did see on YouTube that... Um, the, there is uh, this outlet known as CNN, which would be about the most unreliable source of information, perhaps in the entire world. And they they say, yes, we think that the, the Ark of the Covenant may be in Ethiopia. So, I mean, it, if CNN is saying this, um, it is almost certainly not true. Now, you know, most true believers know that Ron Wyatt has found the Ark of the Covenant, and anybody who's looked into that matter um, knows that Ron Wyatt was a true, genuine, sincere man who did find the Ark of the Covenant, as well as the remains of Sodom and Gomorrah, as well as the resting place of Noah's Ark, okay, as, as well as chariot wheels found at the bottom of the Red Sea, okay, as well as having... The blood, Yahushua's blood that was found on the mercy seat, the lid of atonement of the Ark of the Covenant, examined. Okay, now, I, you know, I don't hear Derek Bros say anything about Ron Wyatt, you know, and where did he find the Ark of the Covenant? He found it in Israel, of course. It was, it was below ground where Yahushua was crucified. Okay, that's where it was. And his blood landed on the mercy seat. Okay. And, and that's just confirming the covenant. And I've got a video on that. It's about a 10-minute video. It's on this channel. So I encourage you to watch that. Also, there's an hour and 20-minute documentary on Ron Wyatt, Amazing Discoveries. Okay, that's also on this channel. Uh, but the question is this. You know, he, he asserts that the Ark of the Covenant, well, maybe he doesn't really assert it. He says it's thought to be in Ethiopia. Well, how would it, well, how would it have gotten from the place of the crucifixion, okay, uh, to Ethiopia? You know, because I'll tell you this. There's been stories where, uh, listen, if Yahuwah doesn't want you getting close to the Ark of the Covenant, you're dead. Okay, so if, But if you have an anointing and he wants you to find it like he, like he used Ron Wyatt for, then he's going to find it, Okay, and everything's going to be fine. So not just anybody could go in there and just move it out of Israel to Ethiopia. It doesn't make any sense. I've never heard anything like this. Okay, uh, But he doesn't give any credit or, or even mention Ron Wyatt. I've never heard him mention him at all. Uh, Let's talk about the butterfly a little bit. Uh, he has a uh, butterfly on uh, his Bible. And, of course, there's been many questions about this, about, hey, what's up with the MK Ultra symbolism and so forth? And, you know, his response is, it's a vidious butterfly. Um, it's a symbol for transformation and so forth, just like, you know, a butterfly can be symbolized as such. Yes, maybe this is so. Uh, but it is odd that, uh, you know, I mean, who has a butterfly on their Bible? You know, there's probably no one, you know, except him. Uh, but I do know this, you know, perhaps it could be something innocuous, but probably not. Uh, the butterfly is also a symbol of, um, of just that, of, of mind control, of these CIA mind control programs. And so what this could symbolize is, is that he himself is under mind control and or that this entire global witness operation is a mind control operation, which I believe it is, 
And I also believe that if it is, that they would place their symbolism right there in plain sight, saying this uh, in order to mock everybody. And of course, if this is the case, would Derek Bros tell you that it is the case? Well, of course he wouldn't. Okay, uh, So I don't know. It's just worth noting that the butterfly is a prominent symbol of mind control. Okay. Uh, hawks and owls. Okay. So let's see. Um, this was, uh, I listened to this on the Global Witness Podcast Reply 42718. Uh, this is about the, uh, let's see. He talks about how a hawk flew and landed on his arm while he was in California. I think it was in San Diego at a restaurant and perched it, perched itself on his arm for like two hours and dug his talons in and it was very painful and so forth. Um, you know, that's, that's a very unusual thing. I've never heard of anybody else experiencing this. Um, you know, he was talking about that, how the hawk just uh, would not leave. That's exactly where it wanted to be and so forth. And, <clears throat> and then he, he was uh, talking to someone. He told another story that it's always been like this. And that the, when he was younger, that there was an owl named Charlie that would follow him wherever he went you know, when, when, when he was a youngster, I don't know how old he was, but there was this owl that would follow him around wherever he went. Now, so I thought, okay, that's interesting. I'm going to look up in Le Leviticus chapter 11 and see what that has to say about hawks and owls. And uh, sure enough, makes very clear in Leviticus chapter 11 that both hawks and owls are unclean birds. So I just thought that was interesting and something worth noting. And also an interesting verse to correlate with this, with the fact that he says that these birds, these birds of prey in particular, hawks and owls, have, you know, have always kind of been attracted to him. Because the story he tells about the hawk is quite unusual. You know, I mean, hawks just do not come and land on someone for two hours and refuse to leave when anybody tries to come and get them away. And that's what he said happened. So I want to read Revelation chapter 18, verses 1 and 2. And it's just something to consider here. And after this, I saw another messenger coming down from the heaven, having great authority, and the earth was lightened from his esteem. And he cried with a mighty voice, saying, Babel, the great, is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons, a haunt for every unclean and hated bird. Okay? Hawks and owls are unclean birds, and he says himself, they have always been attracted to him and followed him. They want to perch on his arm for two hours at a time. Okay. So in my final analysis, in my basic, you know, uh, I guess it's been pretty obvious. Uh, actually, go back. Uh, one thing I want to note here. Um, the number of his subscribers. Okay. So when, uh, when I was first, uh, you know, when my attention was first drawn to this channel, it was in, you know, on or about March 20th or so. And there was approximately... Uh, 23,500 subscribers, somewhere right around there, mid-23,000 subscribers, okay? Uh, this channel came into being, Global Witness Channel came into being on December 31st, 2017, okay? But he didn't put up a video on this channel till January 14th, uh, 2018, okay? So at that point, he had been making videos for a little over two months, and... Um, you know, but this channel had been in existence for about 80 days, you know, on or about March 20th, um, you know, when my attention came to it. He had 23,500 subscribers. So at this point on May 11th, uh, last I checked, there were about 25,300 subscribers. Now let's think about this. From its inception on December 31st, 2017, up to March 20th, if you have 23,500 subscribers or so, that's about 3,000 subscribers a day that would be added to that channel if everything were exactly equal and linear, you know, its progression, okay? Uh, and then over the course of the next 50 days, there's only been 2,000, under 2,000, a little bit under 2,000 more subscribers that have been added to that. Now, mathematically, this does not jive at all, okay? Especially as he is going on in time and presumably gaining in popularity, I mean, if you read all the comments and you read all the people, the, all the thumbs up to his channel, you would think this guy is wildly popular, you know, 
Why is the, the subscriber, it, it should be going up and up and up. It shouldn't have gotten a whole lot at the very beginning and just, you know, almost completely petered out. I, you know, it's just something that's simply an anomaly as to why this is. How he got so many subscribers at the very beginning like this, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, if, if you're getting approximately, you know, uh, again, from December 31st to March 20th, okay, that's about 80 days. That's about 3,000 a day. It's 23,500 at that point. All right? So over the next 50 days, that should be, if it's at the same rate, approximately 15,000 more subscribers. And yet he's got under 2,000. Okay? It doesn't add up. Uh, this is this is something that's anomalous. It just doesn't add up in the entire thing that is Global Witness Derek Rose and everything that he's doing. It, it, it is an operation. I don't know if this man's acting alone or what, but this is some sort of mind control operation, I believe. And I believe he has all the qualities of being a very effective cult leader. And that, you know, that may be what it is. Uh, it may not. Um, but in my final analysis, he is a master deceiver. You know, he, he speaks with great confidence. But, you know, the reason that I know he's a deceiver is because what he's teaching is in direct contradiction to the, what the Word says. That's how I know. Now, if we were both lawyers, you know, and, and I didn't have the Word, yeah, he'd, he'd probably beat me in, in court because, you know, he, he's such a good orator. But I have the Word. We have the Word. That's why we have the Word. That's why these things are written in the Word, so that you can, so that you can identify false teachers, so that you can identify falsehood. Okay, that's why he's given us specific verses, like in Matthew twenty three thirty five and Hebrews eleven four, that specifically tells you Abel was righteous. So if anybody comes along and tries to say that he was demonic because he was offering a blood sacrifice, and that's of the enemy, well, I'm giving you my word that that is incorrect. And here are the witnesses to that: Hebrews eleven four and Matthew twenty three thirty five. You see, okay. So I'm going to reiterate the point. And this cannot be emphasized enough. For those who claim to be a believer in the Word, to be a believer in Messiah, you cannot trust both the Word and Derek Bros. Okay? If you're going to follow that man, you might as well throw the Word out altogether because you're not following Yahushua, and you're definitely not following the true Father, and that is Yahuwah. It is not the serpent, as witnessed in Revelation 12, 9, and Revelation chapter 20, verse 2. Now, He's been talking about this gathering and communing in Arizona and so forth. And, you know, as I know right now, I mean, perhaps when I'm making this video, the first gathering, he wants to gather people out together in the, in the desert out there. I don't know what this is about. But, hey, I'm telling you this. Uh, if you commune with this man and trouble ensues in any way, shape, or form, okay, you've been warned right here. Uh, you know, again, I, I'm, I'm just trying to bring out what's written in Deuteronomy uh, 27, 18. Cursed is he who leads the blind astray. Okay, now, for those who may be being led astray, you need to consider his teachings do not jibe with the word. Okay, and he say, he talks a lot, but he doesn't really say much because he's not a real teacher at all. Okay, he's a cult leader. And he's got all the makings of a cult leader. All right, so I think that's about it. Thank you for listening.